Just like becoming a real-life samurai, ninja, or whatever, there are certain skills, nuances, you have to master before you're well on your way to becoming a legend. The same can be said for Sucker Punch's samurai epic, Ghost of Tsushima, a game that can certainly challenge even the most patient and zen of players out there. Fear not though folks, because as always we've got you covered. Want to become a pro, tackle the hardest difficulty, survive against all odds? Then listen up, here are 7 tips to help you become a pro at Ghost of Tsushima. We know this goes against the strict samurai code, but if you want to be successful in Ghost of Tsushima, the way to go is stealth. Sure, you can wade into any situation swishing your sword about the place, but especially early on you might come unstuck if you choose to do so. So right off the bat you're going to want to put your technique points into the assassination and focused hearing skill tree, and as soon as possible upgrade your tanto. The result is a thing of beauty. Using stealth hearing combined with Killer's Instinct and the Chain Assassination Master, you can fly through camps with relative ease without being seen. Yes, it might take a few hours to grind out the technique points required to get to that juncture, but trust us, it'll be well worth it in the end. If you want to go even stealthier when you hit Act 2, head to the Turtle Rock Shrine in Kushi, just north of old Toyotama Hills, to grab the Huri no Mikoto charm, which allows you to remain hidden when assassinating enemies from Pampas Grass. It's a game changer. Oh, and don't forget to use wind chimes and firecrackers when you upgrade that particular branch of the ghost tree to lure unsuspecting enemies to their death. Delicious. If you do want to go for an early build that is a touch more aggressive, then level up your standoff skill ASAP to give you a head start going into any fight. Quick note before we move on, if you do everything the world has to offer, you can fully upgrade Jin, so these tough decisions you have to make early doors mean nothing after about 20-30 to 30 hours, but they'll certainly make those hours more pain free than they perhaps could have been otherwise. How you approach Ghost of Tsushima early on pretty much dictates how easy the game will be for you in the short to mid term. Straight out of the gate you're going to want to go for the tools that assist you right then and there. Those quests being the Curse of Uchitsune to get the longbow and the Heavenly Strike quest to get the Heavenly Strike move and the Legend of Tadayori to get Tadayori's armour. These are all mythic tales and are represented on the map as blue diamonds. You may need to speak to people in towns to get hints for these to appear. Once you've reached that point, you've got a good basis for the rest of the game and should be able to tackle most scenarios. Ghost of Tsushima has been designed in such a way that you can easily switch approaches on the fly, even mid-battle or duel. So having a good range of armours means you can change to adapt to each scenario, and you totally should. Want to search for items? Use the Traveller's Attire. Want to become a whiz with the bow and arrow? Use Tadayori's armour. Going to get into a brawl? Early on, the Samurai Clan armour is your go-to. Late game, it's really your call. Want to be stealthy? Then the Ronin Antai when you unlock that is great for that. You can go even more granular with the charms, but we'll get to that in a minute. What we're saying is don't use just one piece of armour throughout, that'll be to your detriment. Don't just upgrade one either, upgrade a range of them. Speaking of upgrading, the Katana and the Tanto that serve as Jin's main weapons are the ones you start and finish the game with, so don't hold back on upgrading them. Go nuts. Oh, and if you're looking for gold to upgrade the higher tiers of the katana, then head to the red icons on the map and liberate the heck out of them. They'll grant you a technique point as well. As we briefly just alluded to, the charms in Ghost of Tsushima can be a game changer and help you out when the going gets tough. First things first, you're going to want to unlock all of the minor charm slots and continue acquiring upgradable charms from the Inari shrines via fox dens. Inari's might is a fantastic minor charm which only gets stronger the more shrines you visit. This is the key to success in Tsushima. Next up, you're going to want to head to the Shinto shrines and grab the major charms that each of them houses. But where are they we hear you scream? Well, fortunately you don't need a map to get them all. Simply unlock the Wind of Charms and Wind of Inari abilities on the Technic screen in the Samurai section to unlock winds that will guide you to them. To equip these, just head to the map screen and press right on the D-pad and select which item you're searching for. In terms of where to go specifically for the best charms, well that's easy. For your general toe to toe shenanigans and the one you'll likely use throughout like we did, head to the Golden Summit Shrine just south of the Golden Temple to get the charm of Amaterasu. 
That restores a moderate amount of health on every kill, which can prove vital during big frenetic brawls. On top of that, the Cloud Ridge Shrine grants you the Azumi no Isori charm, making arrows silent on impact, and the Mending Rock Shrine in Eastern Hiyoshi houses the charm of Okuninyoshi, which allows you to recover health outside of combat. A real lifesaver this one, allowing you to save resolve to kill enemies as opposed to healing with it. Quick note, some Shinto shrines will require the grappling hook, which you get towards the end of Act 1. And yes, like armour, be prepared to switch charms on the fly as and when you need them. For instance, if you head to the Spring Falls Shrine in Komoda, you can get the Mizo no Kami charm, which makes parrying much easier. This one's great to equip during the game's duels. It's also worth remembering to scan the battlefield after a fight for crawling enemies whose suffering you can end with an execution to restore some extra resolve. Ghost of Tsushima is a stunning game from an artistic standpoint. The world is basically a colourful, large-scale Japanese watercolour painting. With that comes some really intriguing and more importantly helpful mechanics that you're going to want to take advantage of. In a similar Doctor Doolittle vein to chase around mystical foxes, you're also going to want to follow golden birds whenever they appear, as they usually guide you to some treats that you've not yet discovered, whether it's a hot spring, a bamboo strike, secret cosmetic item or whatever. Swirling flocks of birds also indicate a haiku spot is nearby, not that they have any specific benefits other than being incredibly pretty and each granting a new headband to sport. And similarly, various suspicious gatherings of other animals like fireflies indicate that a vanity item is nearby. It is, after all, important to look good while you do all this, obviously. In keeping with the nature theme we've already touched on briefly, your guiding wind in Ghost of Tsushima should be your best friend. Pretty much everything except haikus in Tsushima are trackable, whether it's Shinto shrines, fox dens, bamboo strikes and so on. You can even track banners, Mongol artifacts, records, singing crickets and flowers if you equip your traveller's attire as well. It really is a blessing in disguise. Right, so we've got you all kitted up, you have some great charms, you're suited and booted with all the fancy armour and now you want to know how to use it. Fair enough. Well first things first, you're going to want to get that perfect parry down as it's the easiest way to open up an enemy. There are varying degrees of the parry depending on which attribute points you have allocated. The perfect parry should perhaps be the first thing you upgrade in the game, then the rest can be done as you get a few more extra points to spend. Then when you do, you're going to want to get perfect healing parry which does exactly what it says on the tin and the unyielding sword parry which allows you to parry an otherwise unblockable blue glint attack. Resolve parry which builds resolve with a parry is also a great shout. And finally, on essentials to up your parry game, the third skill in the wind stance, wind spear defense, is perhaps one of the best abilities in the game, meaning you can automatically parry those annoying pokey spear attacks. Get this one ASAP. In terms of strategies, if you've played a Souls-like, you'll be grand here. The parry windows can be quite generous. If you're new to parry mechanics though, the best way to be successful in Ghost of Tsushima and not get hit all the time is to hold the block button, L1, then let go and press it again just as an attack comes in. If you mess it up, you'll still block it, so no worries there, unless it's a red glint attack as you can't block or parry them. These require a circle button dodge to evade. And if all else fails, equip the aforementioned Mizu no Kami charm and you'll be laughing. Sure, parrying is a great counter-attack in Ghost of Tsushima, but what happens when you want to be more aggressive? Simple, you need to master the stance system, and by master, we mean changing the stance for every class of enemy you encounter in a group. There is absolutely no point hitting a sword guy with a triangle water stance attack, so don't even try it. Sure, basic square button attacks can work on any foe, but the further you get into the game, the more you're going to have to stagger your enemy's defences before you get any hits in. Outside of parrying and counter-attacking, we mean. So from an early point in the game you really need to get used to holding the right trigger, changing stances to suit your next opponent, and then opening up their defence with a triangle attack before then going to town. Rinse and repeat. Obviously before you do that you're going to need to unlock all the stances first and you can do that by killing Mongol leaders at their encampments. Before you kill them though, sneak up unseen and hold the R2 button when prompted to observe their attacks. This will mean you can unlock the final moon stance twice as quickly. In terms of upgrading the stances, absolutely fully upgrade the stone stance for swords and the water stance for shield foes first, as a good proportion of enemies fall under either of these two camps. That and the vast majority of jewels you have are against one of those two classes of enemy. 
And before we move on to the last point, this should be obvious for anyone who has ever played a game of this ilk before. Your first job in every open combat situation should be to hunt down the bloody archers and get rid of them. Unlock the skill to block their arrows too, as that will also come in handy. Last, but by no means least, being a man of the people is essential in Ghost of Tsushima if you don't want to be scouring the wilderness for every little secret or switching between a thousand different guiding wind types. That means doing side quests, both Tales of Tsushima and Mythic Tales, not only for the obvious boost to your status in the world and in the case of the latter, the cool gear you get, but to also acquire helpful gifts too. These are a godsend when it comes to upgrading your equipment, granting large bundles of supplies and materials. On top of that, speaking to people marked with a speech bubble in various hub regions will unlock quests and important locations on the map that can save you a lot of time in the long run. If you're looking to defog the map quickly and see more of the beautiful island of Tsushima and the secrets it holds, here are two hot tips. 1. A near fully upgraded traveller's attire allows you to unfog more of the map as you move. And two, liberating settlements defogs the surrounding area in an instant. The bigger the settlement, the bigger the defogging. And last, but by no means least, use your guiding wind to find the singing crickets, which you'll find at cemeteries, and unlock the power to manipulate the weather with your flute. It doesn't really do anything, but it does look really, really cool. Make it rain! <laughs> And there we have it folks, 7 tips to make you a pro at Ghost of Tsushima. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. We'll see you next time, bye!